Hey everybody, this is Tom Tullis and you're watching the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to paint up the tavern wall set from Fat Dragon Games. Now, you can either primer your piece gray, flat gray and then paint all of the woodwork with a burnt umber. Or, in my case, I cheated and got Rust-Oleum uh, camouflage colors. They've got a nice dark brown that's flat and I just use that over my primer coat and just quicken things up a little bit coating all of the woodwork. So once you've done that you're gonna want to use um, a medium brown in this case I'm using folk art coffee latte but you do not need to use this color. I didn't choose this for any particular reason other than it was already sitting out on my desk. Any medium brown that's gonna contrast with your dark brown base coat will be fine. You don't have to have this one. Now uh, to apply this, I'm going to use a standard house painting sponge brush. Uh, I just tear it off the handle. It's got a little plastic insert. You can get a big bag of these at like Home Depot or Menards really cheap. And once you get it off, tear it into a more manageable size. Just whatever it's comfortable for you. And you're going to dab just a little bit of that medium brown on the sponge. And it's really important you don't put too much. Dab it off on a paper towel till you kind of get the hang of this. Uh, it's really much easier to add more than try to take it off if you get too much. And I'm just kind of scrubbing this in. Now, I went over this technique in more depth on the uh, Tower of Terror painting tutorial that's on this channel, so you may want to check that out for Distressed Wood. Uh, but here all I'm doing is brushing it on with the sponge and the reason I'm using a sponge is a brush would put paint down in the sculpted crevices the the wood uh, grain and you don't want that you want that to remain dark so a sponge uh, puts paint on the high points and not the low uh, if you get too much on just flip the sponge over use a clean portion of it to kind of feather that in and just keep rotating your sponge around apply a little paint flip it over uh, feather that paint out, rub it in with a clean portion of the sponge and just kind of work it back and forth like that until you get something that you like. And there's no right or wrong to this. Don't make it all even. Have some areas lighter than others, some areas darker. Um, it's those variations that really make this look aged and lived in. So I'll speed this up here, just get this done. But again, just working it back and forth. Now, the next color we're going to do is for our stucco, and I'm using Apple Barrel Khaki, but any tan or uh, parchment color will work. Uh, this may be a little too yellow for some people's taste. I'm um, just, again, using it because that's what I've got handy. But use a small brush to just do your outlines where it's going to meet that woodwork. Um, go in very carefully, do your edges. Um, and again, if you're doing a whole bunch of buildings, you could do some with khaki, some with parchment, so that they have some variation. Um, but just brush this all in very carefully. And there's a little thing to be aware of here. We're going to make this um, uh, kind of have a modeled effect when we're done. So don't worry about making this totally 100% covered. Let some of those dark areas show through so it's got kind of a modeled effect. That's totally fine. Uh, there's no reason not to do that. Um, again, just get your line work in and then we're going to uh, fast forward here and I'm going to use a thicker brush here to fill in the areas between the line work. And again, as you can see here, I'm not filling it in completely. I'm letting dark areas show through to kind of create that modeled effect. If you put on a solid coat, you could always go back in, mix a little dark. Uh, brown or something with this khaki to put that modeling in but then that adds another step save yourself the time just don't put a full coverage uh, coat on right now and it just does that effect for you without any extra effort so we'll get that done then next step I'm gonna take the original khaki and mix some white with it and what I'm doing here is I'm just using an old brush and modeling it in just putting some spots and this creates a three tone effect uh, to make it look more aged. You've got your khaki base coat. You've got some of the dark brown showing through where you didn't apply that base coat super thick, presumably, and now I'm applying the lighter khaki that I mixed with white. And again, just dabbing it in, just so it's got kind of a random modeled effect. Uh, you don't have to be real precise with this or anything. And that just gives it a really nice weathered appearance. Now, 
to finish off the stucco, this isn't necessary, but it's something I really like to do. You want to take a medium green, a grass green, a forest green. In this case, it's palm leaf by Apple Barrel. Don't go out looking for this. Just use any medium green. It's fine because we're going to mix it with a gray to tone it down and then mix that color with uh, some of the khaki. So again, it's we're just wanting to have a version of the khaki that is slightly green in hue. So it doesn't matter what green or gray you use, you're just wanting to tone down the green enough that it's not overpowering the khaki. And I'm just going to dab that in a few places. If you get it too dark, put some straight khaki over it. You can blend this in and out to whatever looks good to you. There's, there's Again, there's no right or wrong to any of this. Now. To finish this off, if you really want to make the wood look distressed, take some of the khaki and dry brush it in on the wood. Not very much, just a little bit. You can rub it out if you put too much in, just rub your finger across it. And that's it. That's all it takes to paint your tavern walls up and have them look really weathered and really fantastic. So thanks for checking this out. I will see you next time. Please click that subscribe button in your bottom right hand corner.